Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of AI Theater. I'm your host, Emily Tellick. I'm Patrick. And we have two new scripts for you. The theme this episode is... The Wild West. The Wild West. So I'm not really sure what to expect from Patrick's, who we're going to start with. So okay. we're just going to get right into it. So Patrick, take it away. Okay. A dusty, sun-baked western town, the Sarsaparilla kid rides in on a well-groomed horse, attracting the attention of the townsfolk. Seen midday in a small western town, the Sarsaparilla kid enters atop his trusty horse, a confident grin on his face. Gather round, gather round, feast your eyes on the one, the only, Sarsaparilla Kid. The townsfolk stop their activities, some curious, others skeptical, as they turn to watch the newcomer. I'm the fastest draw in the West, the sharpest shooter, and I'm the slickest rider you'll ever have the pleasure of meeting. He, <laughs> he rears his horse and fires his gun into the air. <laughs> I've outwitted sheriffs, outshot bandits, and outlasted anyone who dare challenge me. And now I've come to grace your humble town. Some of the townsfolk clap, others muddle, mutter amongst themselves, still unsure what to make of this flamboyant character. Now, who's up for a drink with the kid? First round of sarsaparilla is on me. The scene ends with the sarsaparilla kid striding confidently toward the saloon, the townsfolk falling behind, a mix of excitement and apprehension in the air. I'm the sarsaparilla kid. If any man here dares, I challenge him to a duel. First, a drink for courage. One sarsaparilla, barkeep. Always a spectacle with you, kid. Reluctantly slides a bottle of sarsaparilla across the counter to the kid. The bottle crashes on the floor as the kid fails to catch it. Whoops, let's run that again. <laughs> Didn't warm up. <laughs> Another bottle slides across the counter and crashes on the floor. That, that, that was a joke, gang, now. <laughs> now slide one for real. The barkeep slides a third bottle. It crashes on the floor. Okay, I'm not wasting any more drinks. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm not wasting any more drinks. <laughs> Please, barkeep, I can pay. My reputation. Your reputation doesn't clean up broken glasses, kid. Slides another bottle, which also smashes. One more. Enough. I've had it up to here with your antics, sarsaparilla kid. You waltz in here like you own the place, causing a ruckus, breaking my stock. You think this is all some grand adventure, don't you? A game to play at your leisure. Well, let me tell you something, kid. Life ain't a game for the rest of us. <laughs> His voice grows heavier, filled with years of hardship. You see this saloon? It's not just a business. It's my life's blood. My only means to scrape by. I built it from nothing with these two hands while battling illness and grief. You ever watch someone you love wither away, kid? You ever feel the grip of disease on your own body, knowing there's no cure, just a slow, relentless decline? He pauses, collecting himself, his voice tinged with bitterness. My wife, may she rest in peace, fought the consumption for years. All of our savings, every last goddamn cent, went to the doctors who couldn't save her. And now, here I am, a widower with a failing liver, working day and night just to keep a roof over my head. He points a finger accusingly at the kid. So when you swagger in here, breaking bottles and throwing around words like you're some kind of hero, it's a, it's a slap in the face, kid. A slap to all of us who fight real battles every single day. Battles that can't be won with a quick draw or a charming smile. His voice softens, more resigned than angry. Okay, cool, but I swear I have the money just one more try. This is your last chance, kid. Do not make me regret it. Another failed catch, another broken bottle. The saloon is tense. I'll pay. I, I, I have to pay. That's enough. You're done, kid. Pay up or get out. I, I, I don't have any money to pay for these. What? You come in here, break my stock, listen to my wife's story, and now you can't pay? I guess, I guess I'm not much of an outlaw after all. You know what they do to outlaws who steal? They're hung from the neck until dead. The Sarsaparilla kid nods solemnly, leaving the saloon as the other patrons watch in silence. Cut to the Sarsaparilla kid standing on the gallows, a crowd gathered. His face shows a mix of fear and resignation. The lever is pulled. The Sarsaparilla kid falls, but his head slips to the noose, landing on, on the ground unharmed. Whew. Well, well, I'll be. That's one way to dodge a bullet, or a noose in this case. Sorry, folks, let me try that again. The scene abruptly cuts the executioner standing on the gallows next to the Sarsaparilla kid. Executioner shrugs comically. 
The scene fades to black amidst the lighthearted chatter of the towns. <laughs> End of scene. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm curious, what did you type into ChatGPT to prompt uh, this? This was again like trying to shape it in the in the thing. Okay. Like that was so I asked it like, all right, have this guy keep knocking the bottle off over and over. But like the monologue I added separately, uh, I was like, give the barkeep an indignant monologue, like about disease and the death of his wife and like a couple other things. Like okay. That. And it, it went for it. It did. His it was really and funny. Like I mean, it wasn't funny, but yeah. <laughs> it was funny. It was. Cool. No, that was a really good script. I enjoyed that. That's probably one of the most coherent. Yeah, honestly. Ones we've had, probably period, out yeah. of all of these. <laughs> Genuinely, like it. It like, made sense. It, at, and that was a lot of like, you know, guiding it and like doing all these things in different chunks. Like yeah. It was the shortest one, but I probably did the most yeah. prompt writing. But like this is one of the scripts that I feel we could actually either stage or shoot or present yeah. to the public and it would be good. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas the other ones, like we've always had the issue running into where it's like it doesn't like the conflict or it, t it tells instead of shows mm -hmm. a lot in our scripts. But this, this actually feels like it has substance to it and, and real characters. There's something to it, but it just it felt so directed. It's like, I don't know like what the thing added to it that I couldn't have just written myself kind of quickly. Yeah. Like it feels like something like, maybe if you don't speak English, but you have an idea. Mm -hmm. Like you could probably write something funny in another language. Yeah. Maybe? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what it's got in terms of actually making something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. This is good. This I really like this one. Mm -hmm. So mine is called Trustina's Redemption. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you already know your characters, so we'll just get right into it. Exterior, Trustina's farmhouse day. Trustina, a resilient farmer with a hunched walk, tends to her chores when the distant clattering of ostriches catches her attention. Glenn, and Glenn with one N, two flamboyantly dressed toothpaste salesmen make a grand entrance on their towering ostrich steeds. Well, howdy there, Trustina. Apologies for the ruckus, but we've heard you've got the finest land this side of the Mississippi. What business is it of yours? No need to get all riled up, ma'am. We're just here to offer you a sweet deal. Trustina eyes them warily. See, we're expanding our operation, and your land is perfect for our new toothpaste and cattle emporium. Toothpaste and cattle what now? <laughs> the future, Trustina. We're talking about a toothpaste empire that'll put smiles on folks' faces, and cattle so plump they'll practically brush their own teeth. Trustina, unimpressed, crosses her arms. My land ain't for sale, and I sure ain't interested in your fanciful ideas. Well, that's a shame, ma'am, because if you ain't willing to sell, we might not just have to find other ways to make our dream come true. With that, they turn their ostriches and ride away, leaving Trustina with a sense of unease about the impeding storm these peculiar salesmen might bring to her peaceful homestead. Exterior, Trustina's farm day. Days pass and the tension between Trustina and Glenn, and Glenn with one N, continues to escalate. One morning, Trustina discovers that her beloved cow, fittingly named cow, is missing. Exterior, Trustina's farm day. Trustina follows the trail, leading her to Glenn and Glenn with one N, who are attempting to coax cow into a makeshift pen. What in the blazes do you think you're doing with my cow? Business, Trustina. <laughs> Business. You can't just take what ain't yours. Well, ma'am, if you won't sell the land, we'll have to improvise. As Chestina watches helplessly, Glenn and Glenn with one end successfully corral cow into an ostrich-drawn cart. <laughs> this is the future, Chestina. A toothpaste and cattle empire awaits. Chestina, seething with anger, begins plotting her revenge. Exterior desert town day. Trustina arrives at the neighboring town where Glenn and Glenn with one N have set up their makeshift farm, complete with ostentatious toothpaste-themed decorations. You varmints! You stole my cow when y'all are trying to take my land? It's just business, Trustina. You'll thank us later. Trustina, with her hunched walk and fire in her eyes, determined to, to take matters into her own hands. Exterior, Trustina's farm day. Trustina gathers a posse of neighbors sympathetic to her cause, and together they ride to confront Glenn and Glenn with one N. Exterior, Glenn and Glenn's farm day. A standoff ensues as Trustina and her posse face off against Glenn and Glenn with one N. This land is mine and cow belongs to me. We ain't backing down, Trustina. The town folks, caught in the middle, watch as the tension builds. 
Instead of, oh, exterior Glen and Glen's farm later. Sorry, Glen and Glen with one N's farm later. Let's, they are two, they People are two are characters. They are two characters. There's Glen and there's Glen with one N. Maybe I'll double the audio in post. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. It might not translate well with the stage reading. It's all good. Uh, okay, Glenn and, and Glenn with one end's farm later. Instead of resorting to violence, Trustina proposes a different resolution. How about we settle this like civilized folk? <laughs> a game of rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors? Winner gets the land and cow. They reluctantly agree. Trustina throwing rock. Ugh. Rock beats scissors. Oh wait, I think you're supposed to sh you're supposed to throw scissors, but the script doesn't oh, say that's, that. That's okay. <laughs> we get it. We get it. <laughs> I didn't even know there was rock paper scissors until we did it at the start. Remember? Huh? The audience doesn't know this, but we did rock paper scissors at the start of the. Oh, program. that's true. We did. I did not know about this. Program. Oh, okay. Doesn't that tell you that Jesus is real? It does. <laughs> anyway. I heard it here first at Sandwich Community Television. <laughs> wait, let's try that again. You throw <laughs> scissors just for the visual. Okay. And I'll throw rock. Rock, paper, scissors. Wait, no, it's just the rock. <laughs> this is falling apart. Get it together. Rock beats scissors. <laughs> We're not doing that. Yeah. Rock, be rock beats scissors. <laughs> Justina smirks triumphantly, having won the match. This land is mine. Now get off of it. As Glenn and Glenn with one end begrudgingly agree leave, <laughs> Trustina watches knowing that victory came at a cost. Interior, Trustina's farm night. Trustina, exhausted and contemplative, sits by the fireplace when her late husband's ghost appears. Oh, by the way, her husband died, but despite the fact that I prompted ChatGB several times to include this exposition, it just still didn't. Um, <laughs> so, oh, do you want to read for husband's sure, ghost, sure, sure. please? Trustina, you've done what needed to be done. I miss you, darling. I know, but you're strong, Justina. And now you've got to carry on. <laughs> Justina nods, finding solace in the ethereal presence of her late husband. And remember, keep brushing them teeth. You've got a lot of smiling to do. <laughs> he fades away as Justina smiles through her tears. This is, this is Justina crying. This is so Exterior, powerful. Justina's farm, day, weeks later. The town has embraced Justina's resilience, and she, in turn, has come to appreciate the <laughs> eccentricity of Glenn and Glenn with one end. Together, they've created something unique, a toothpaste and cattle emporium that defies convention. Trustina, Glenn, and Glenn with one end, now riding on their ostriches with smiles on their face, survey the land they've cultivated together. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought, Trustina? We make quite a team. A team like no other. <laughs> well, I'd never thought I'd see the day when toothpaste and cattle could get along. <laughs> they share a hearty laugh. <laughs> Yeah. Signaling the beginning of an unexpected partnership that flourished in the vast frontier. Fade out the end. <laughs> this script is a mess like I am. <laughs> what was the part? So was this all in one prompt? Like I feel like that's no. more impressive. So I, I played around with the prompts quite a bit. I started with a general idea, read a western, this and that. Like a, you know, I named like her name's Trustina. There's toothpaste, bur toothpaste salesman and all that. Um, and then I was like editing it more and more and I was trying to get so that it would put exposition in that her husband had passed away mm -hmm. in the beginning because I wanted his ghost to come in at the end and sort of, he was supposed to come in, um, there was originally a shootout and that's how they, that's how they, you know, big shootout. Yeah as the climax. And I was like, that's kind of boring. Why don't they do rock, paper, scissors instead? Mm -hmm. And I was trying to have the, the ghost of the husband come in um, and help Trustina out, but it just, no matter what I did, it was not, it wasn't doing it. So I was like, all right, whatever. So but I fought it a little bit okay. and then I gave in what and that's what we got. So now the metaphor I'm coming to now is like, it's a little <clears throat> like golf. Yeah. And it's like with my one, like, yeah, I got it into the hole, right? Yeah. But I was hitting it so many times. So I'm way funny. over par. That's like a triple bogey. Yeah, so many yeah. times. But I, what I like what you do though is that you very much, um, you'll you kind of cut and paste sort yeah. of, which I don't really do. I kind of just like no rewrite this, but and then I'll yeah. give it specific like rewrite this, but make this tension 
pop here or make this conflict resolve here or make this character th do this. And it doesn't. Which I think is more admirable. Yeah. To go with it. Because I'm really massaging this thing into like something that I find. I, yeah. I think you're allowing the program to speak for itself and to really yeah. show what it's capable of. Right. Yeah. But we have different approaches. And I like that because then, uh, as a result, we have different scripts and different stories. And it's funny either way. Yeah. Still sucks. Still, still sucks, sucks. Still sucks. Not completely, point. but um, yeah. Any, any more thoughts on the two scripts you read? No. Yeah. No. All right. Well, that. Use a sarsaparilla ah! and a toothpaste. Yeah. All right. Well, I can't wait. The holidays are coming up, which means we are going to have some holiday-themed scripts, of course. I can't wait for that. Probably horror. Kwanzaa also. only. Kwanzaa only. All right, That's we will hilarious. do a Kwanzaa only AI theater episode. That sounds great. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, that concludes another episode of AI theater. Thank you so much for watching, and we will catch you in the next episode. Hold on. We have to. We have to. We always throw our script. Oh, we throw our script. And I say Kwanzaa only, not to make fun of Kwanzaa, but do you really want to just see Santa is a bad guy, or Santa eats a bunch of kids, or something like that? Yeah. We want something new. We want. Yeah. We want to learn. Yeah. Just Definitely. wanted to clarify that.